Hi, my name is Alex and I will show you how to build network with Mikrotik API, Radius, UnitSwap and everything made on Splinks. So I have some access points connected to routers and these routers are connected to each other with OSPF routing. Then I have uplinks on the Cisco devices. All other devices are Mikrotik. So let me add a customer. The customer I will choose the Mikrotik router OS and just write that it's a Mikrotik customer and this radio will be connected to access point 111. So I'll just set up the icon wireless and set up the console type VNC. So let's move it to access point 111. So this is the customer radio which is a Mikrotik and access point is Mikrotik as well. I'm choosing the network to connect these two devices together so network is customer, so what, this is just the name and now I set up the interface on Mikrotik customer e Ethernet 0 will be connected to that network called customer and then the same thing I need to choose on access point 111 so this is the way how I create on my unit lab Mikrotik device and how I connect this device to existing topology so at the moment my Mikrotik customer radio is connected to access point. My access point is uh, made on a bridge mode. Routers are routing everything on OSPF and uplinks have a BGP connection. So let's make some small description. AP is on bridge mode so there is no routing on it. What I can choose and what I can uh, authenticate. I can use wireless access list for MAC authentication and I can define that only customers with the proper MAC address can access my AP bridge. This can be achieved with API. So this splinks will create instead of you automatically. So the second area I'm going to set up is PPPoE server and this is you we are using radius. So customer is connected to AP but access point is bridging it to router and this router is working as PPPoE server. So the customer radio is PPPoE client in that case. So this is a way how to divide access point and PPPoE server and move them on different devices. So what I'm going to do on the third turn is uh, making queues. All my queues I will create on the central point with contention to 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 for example. So that central point is router 21. So let's put this right at centrally. And uh, this will be also managed by Splinks via API. And the last step if I want to, because I have OSPF routing and all customers can be connected via second path and they can go through router 22. So I will create the queue copies of queue or queue mirroring. So I will set up it here on router 22. So it means that we have three different areas how we can manage with splings automatically the network. The first area is our access point. We create using API on wire wireless tables. I, will, I create access lists entries with a MAC address. So this is area number one. Area number two is my PPPoE server authentication. So this is area number two. Let's add a second. And area number three is queues on third type of routers. Everything this can be combined on one router and can be done on one router. But I wanted to show you how to split it into three different routers and only with a few steps. So the first part is wireless authentication on AP. We need to define all our routers on the networking field. So this is router access point 111 and I want to say that all customers connected to this router will be authenticated with MAC address. All, and then they will be bridged to router 11 where we will have uh, PPPoE and then queues will be created on router 21. So let's do it. Let's define first all these routers. I have them already here, so I put the router, IP address and description. So that's my uh, status, if API, if they connect through API or they connect through radius. They can connect both with API and radius in the same time. 
So this is the API settings. Username, password, I need to enable uh, the shaping or limitation of speeds. And here on AP uh, access points uh, 111 I had the API and on PPPoE server I'm using only PPP. So I'm not using uh, any kind of communication with API, I'm using only radius. So let's connect to access point 111. We have a wireless and there are already some entries for access lists for MAC address. Okay, I'm going to my customer. I will choose one customer and I will set up some I MAC address. So the customer will be, let's say this one, Alex Cherry. He's not yet connected. I must choose his status and create his status active. So now we can use, now that's just the one small thing that we can use is uh, integration with Google. We can set up that uh, GPS coordinate. And now we just add the new service internet. So that will be planned with contention. Wi-Fi 5 max with 1 to 5. So I define price and where it had to be added. And so now the login, the password, and the important thing I chosen router. So that means the router where I will put the API settings. IPv4 network I assigned from my networks and of course Mac because I want to set up this Mac on access list. I must define this Mac here on the customer profile. I add it so now that customer but this is this service, particular service, can connect to particular router and it will be authenticated on his wireless tables. So that was the first thing that we did. Automatically, after adding each device or each MAC address, it will be added through API. The second is radius authentication. Radius authentication we make on different device. So that is made on router 11. Let's choose router 11, define all radio settings, so that's like PPP. Also we can authenticate login, that means uh, administrators, but I'm now defining PPP, PPPoE. This is the customer router, let's go to the customer router and change his username to the username from the splings and the password, apply. And after enabling, we will see that everything was connected and getting the proper IP address. So Radius is working, and as you can see, it was working. It's working on different router than API rules are created. The customer is online, so we can get his session information, information about his data transfer, etc. So let's take a look on some existing customer. Yeah, this is his charts of usage of his link and statistics for a certain period which we can change and define. And the third part, the last one, is I want to create queues with contention. So this is already a router 21 with some rules. So I want to create rules on that router 21 for a speed limitation and copy all the rules to router 22. How can I do this? So let me just again go to customer and activate maybe the new one. These are the plans with the Wi-Fi 1 to 5. So I'm going to new customer and I just I'm just going to save him and check if this customer is here. So these are the rules. IP address is 4 on the end. So I'll choose the router and click save. So now I go back and number 4 IP4 dot 4 on the end should appear. So all the rules are updated within one minute. So here we have it. So it was updated in the main rule of parent because we are making aggregation or contention and it was also updated just for with the rule of customer itself. So we have a limit add which means guaranteed speed which is calculated from the values which we define in the tariff and then we have six customers on the plan of five max but they have parent with six max so it means that all these customers cannot reach more than six megabits of traffic simultaneously 
So if there is no customers connected, one user can get 5 Macs. But if they will start downloading simultaneously, they will share maximum throughput of 6 Macs. So, and this is everything is created on one router 21. If I will send traffic to router 22, what will happen? Nothing, because I don't have rules there, so it's empty. What I can do with Springs, I can set up the copies of rules from one central point to the second one. So this is router 21. If I go to my Spring settings and disable shaping on router 21 and say that shaper is router 22, it will copy all my rules to two of these routers. So let's check it. Micritic, I want to see shaper is central queue router 22 and I leave enable shaper. When I leave it, it means that rules will be still enabled on both devices. If I will disable it, it will stop copying local rules. So it will only create rules remotely. So in my case, I want to leave rules on router 21 and now we just need to wait for a few seconds and this the same rules appear on my second router. Yes, so they are here. So you see the rules are exactly the same and we can achieve contention on two locations simultaneously. So thank you for your time. This is all from my side for today.